All right, to give you a little prophecy this morning, okay? We're going to look at some prophetic events of things coming to a theater near you very soon. 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verse number 1. This know also that in the last days perilous time, that's hyper dangerous, that's uh, 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 destroying times, killing times, difficult times. In the last days... Uh, perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of them own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce beggars, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning and never able come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest to all men, as theirs also was. Uh, Brother Larry, you pray and ask the Lord to help us, please, would you? Preach the Word of God. Pray for us individually, myself especially. God, you cleanse our hearts. Lord, may Amen. the blood cover us, Lord. Amen. May be, we be square with you from this hour, this very minute mm. on. Yes, sir. My Lord, that our ears might be open. And yes. Might the Word of God go in yes. and do a special work. Yes, sir. A work we not forget. A work that continually changes us and helps us, Lord, to have your mind. Give you all the praise. We look forward to this message in this hour. Be with your man as he preaches. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. 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 This is probably one of the most difficult passages in all of the Bible. It's unbelievably difficult because it's hard truths about personal things. It glares at you like staring into a mirror and you can't escape what you're seeing glaring back at you. You walk into another room and you think, man, I, I got to get away from that for a second. You walk back in and you stand in front of the mirror and it's the same thing staring right back at you again. It's generally preached from the perspective of this is the shape of the world during the time of the last days. This is the shape of the church in the last days. This is the shape of Christians in the last days. This is not just the shape of unsaved people. This is where you can go if you match it up with Galatians 5 if you don't learn to walk in the Spirit. You say, I would never do those things. Well, wait until I'm done and maybe I might convince you of these things. The Apostle Paul is getting you ready for what's going to take place right before the rapture of the church. If you notice in 2 Timothy chapter number 2, I told you these things in Sunday school, but you come on down there, he mentions suffering and reigning with Jesus Christ in verses 12 and 13. He says it's necessary for you to study to show yourself approved in verse 15. Why do I need to study? Because you won't understand suffering if you don't study. You got to go to what the Bible says. You got to be able to see what the truth says. And then you're going to find somebody come in there like uh, the increase of ungodliness. Their word eats as a canker who false doctrine shows up in verses 16 and 7. That's Hymenaeus and Philetus. That's amillennialism, teaching that the resurrection's already taken place or that the resurrection's spiritual or that the rapture has already taken place. You have people coming in with false doctrine. You need to study the Bible so you make sure you recognize false teachers and false preachers when you hear from them. And then he said, who concerning the truth, watch, have said, verse 18, the resurrection is past already. Overthrow the faith of some. Well, if the resurrection already occurred, and Paul's trying to tell you a rapture's coming, he's saying, well, the resurrection already happened. You're stuck. You're done. You're not going to get any help. I guess it would overthrow the faith of some. If they took away the hope that they thought that they were going to have that, and now it's been taken away from them. Never in the foundation of God. Verse number 19, stand assured. The Lord knoweth them that are His. Giving you a little bit of a body turn of security. Talks about a great house in verse 20. And then he says in 21, A man therefore purge himself from these will be a vessel of honor, sanctified meat for the master's use. 
You know what he says? You've got to get rid of some things in order to be a vessel that God can use. Doesn't mean your past and your history uh, precludes you from doing anything for the Lord. Doesn't mean if you've been divorced, you can't serve Jesus. It doesn't mean if you've been in jail or prison, you can't serve Jesus. You've been on drugs or you've been an adulterer, or you've been a fornicator, or, or you've been a liar, or a cheater, or a slanderer, or a gossiper, and or whatever that thing might be. You know what he said? That's in the past. Amen. And the devil tried to always anchor you to the past. You know what he said? If a man purge himself of these things, how do I purge? I'm washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. My sins are under the blood. What I used to be is not what I'm not now, what I am now. I'm not perfect now, but I am forgiven now. I'm trying now. Whereas before, me get caught up in those things and then people say, well, because of what you did, and then they get into this doctrine of, well, I did it because, before I was saved, so it doesn't count. But if you were saved as a young man or a young woman and you messed up since then, they say, well, you're not qualified for anything. No, you're in the same condition. You're under the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And because of your past, that doesn't preclude you from doing things in the present. Amen. You have to realize there may be some uh, things that you're not allowed to do. If you've been messed up with pedophilia or something like that, you ain't ever going to work around kids, at least not here. Amen. You say, why? I don't trust you. You say, well, you know, you should trust me. I've been forgiven. Thank the Lord he forgave you. Praise the Lord for that. And he sit down and we're going to keep you under the microscope. Well, I ain't going to go if you're going to watch me. Okay, then you have to go somewhere else. You say, why? There's certain things you have to realize are repercussions for what you do. You can't just throw a blanket over it and say, well, it doesn't make a difference. You have to understand you lose some of your liberties and some of your freedoms. That stays with you from now on. Notice in that passage there as you come through that, he says the fool is an unlearned questions uh, avoid and, and uh, they do ginger strives. Here's the thing I want you to see. Look in verse 25. In meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. You mean I'm the great opposition? I'm talking about the mirror in chapter 3. Sure, you oppose yourself. He's going to show you how you oppose yourself. He's going to give you a hard, long look at yourself. And notice he says, impose themselves. If God peradventure will grant them repentance, how? To the acknowledging of the truth. If you'll accept the truth, God will give you repentance. How would you know how to repent and what you need to turn from if you don't know what the truth is? How do you know what you're doing is wrong if you don't accept when God says you're wrong that you say, you're right, I'm wrong. The Lord said, okay, you acknowledge the truth and I'll grant you the repentance. But then notice what he says, they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Why? We know the devil's a liar. We know the devil will help make you lie about yourself. Now I'll ask you this question at the onset of the message and I'll do my best not to belabor the point too much because there's a lot of attributes that are in the passage and I'm going to comment on them. You say, why? It's attributes that show up in the last days. It's things that occur in the modern church. It's things that, that modern preachers and modern Christians are like, oh, that doesn't really happen. And why do you have to preach on that? You must be guilty of those things, all I can figure. Why would you care if somebody preaches on something you're not guilty of? Why would that bother you at all? Why do you get so offended by those kind of things? I'm just reading to you the Bible. Preacher, you preach that kind of stuff, you'll run people off. Preach on. But it's in the Bible. Amen. You have this idea nowadays because the Bible says the first thing that comes up there, the Nisno also, adding to what's in chapter 1 and 2, then the last day's perilous time. Men shall be lovers of themselves. Men don't throw it on women. It said men. You say, well, that's a non-gender specific. No, he'll show you in a minute. He'll address the women. But he says the problem is the men because you're too stinking yellow-bellied. You got a backbone like a cotton string and you won't take the leadership of your household because you don't want to be the spiritual leader in your household. So you put that on the woman, you make the woman be that way, and now you're in the generation reaping the benefit of that, and all the hippie yippies that came up through Woodstock and stuff are now sitting up in Congress and in the Senate and running this country now because, you know, mama's boys and stuff because you won't grab the reins. Well, you know, preacher, you know, I believe I'm the head of the house, but she's the neck that turns the head. What controls the head, boys, is who is in control. You make it however you want to make it and fix it however you want to fix it. And ma'am, you are wicked as Jezebel herself if you try to take the reins away from your husband. You say, well, he don't need to be in charge of this household. What in the cat hair did you marry him for? Amen. If you needed a son, you should have just had one instead of getting married. Amen. You say, well, you're kind of challenging me. Yeah, I hope I am challenging you, some of you. Some of you need to get the blood pumping a little bit. You look a little pink blooded this morning. You look a little bit, you know, well, I just hope he preaches this. It's just a wonderful message. I hope it's just covered in feathers and so wonderful and so fluffy and when he talks this way I could just squeeze a grape. <laughs> Got pink blooded sort of a query kind of a fluffy blessed are the pure in heart 
for they shall see God. You know, uh, there's no way you find anywhere in that Bible Jesus ever acted effeminate, acted homosexual, or was a womanizer, or there was anything about Jesus at all that even made him look any way whatsoever effeminate. Jesus Christ was a man's man. You make him anything but that, you're hiding yourself is what you're doing. Because you have to understand with that leadership comes responsibility. And if you're dumb as a box of rocks, then turn off the television set, put down the video games, and get your nose in the pages of that book right there and learn something. And if you can't learn it, ask God. You do all things through Christ that strengtheneth you and get busy about studying the book. Yes, Amen. fellow said to me, he said, man, I've taken that test three times and I've flunked. And he said, what do you think of that? You think the test is too hard? I said, no, I think you're not studying hard enough. You can't blame the testing system. They did that where I came from. They got to keep bringing it down and bringing it down and bringing it down and bringing it down and bringing it down where you could fall off the back of a turnip truck and pass the thing. You say, why? Well, it's the only way to be able to, you know, to get the right and fair and equitable about. No. If you want to be a Christian, you know what you have to do? You got to realize some things have got to go and I got to be willing to turn some things off in order to learn some things. Put yourself under some good hard preaching. Get somebody yelling at you, skinning your hide, getting upset with you, tearing your britches off. Some of you, you've never been in the military. You've never been in a pillar of the military. Some of you never even played sports. You never even had a coach yell at you. The only closest you ever came to was your wife yelling at you. You're kind of like, honey, don't yell at me. You make me so nervous. You need, uh, you need a man to yell at you. You need a man to get up in your face. You need a man that's not intimidated because you reach back and say, you see this wallet right here, don't you, preacher? You see that wallet, you realize what'll happen now. You know, you get, you get talking too much about that, you know. We'll cut back on throwing that in the plate, you know. You got stuff to finance around here, you know. Yeah, you think you're going to intimidate me with that? I got people buy and sell you 10 times over. I got a father that owns a cattle on a thousand hills. You think you're going to intimidate me by threatening to leave the church and take your tithe with you? I don't know what you tithe in the first place. You're probably getting what you pay for. Yeah. Come on, Steve. The day and time in this nation, in this country, where a man is a man and he's known by his word, and when he shook your hand, it had some steel behind it. A man that said, I mean business, and I'll be there, and I'll do what's right. Not a man that acts like a woman with frilly lace on his drawers and afraid every time he turns around, I'm not coming, he's going to start that again. Okay, fine, go to the house and watch Joel and Joyce. Those two men will help you out a lot. You say, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to prepare the church. The Bible says in the last days, look in 2 Timothy 4, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but heap to themselves teachers, not preachers, having itching ears and be turned under fables. That's a bunch of men. That is not the women. That's a bunch of men that have been influenced by women. Nowadays, when a man gets up and talks like a drill instructor, you're all of a sudden, I just, I, he's just not going to reach people like that. Oh, come on, you yellow bellied sap sucker, you. Why don't you just admit you don't like it instead of trying to throw everybody else in the whole thing with you? I'm taking up for everyone else, fellas. Uh, don't y'all agree he shouldn't talk like that? Around here, you know what you'll get? No, we believe he should talk like that. What's your problem? Amen. Amen. You say what's happened to the, to the country. It's not what's happened to the country. It's what happened to the men in the country. I get wore out with sermons on women all the time. Like women are always the problem. No, women are not the problem. It's the man that won't grab the reins from Jezebel. You don't have to slap her around. You don't have to be a jerk. You don't have to walk seven steps behind you. Some of you men go to the opposite extreme. You carry around a Bible. looks like you're on a suitcase getting ready to fly on a 747 or something. And, you know, you got this, you know, I'm the man of my house, you know. And they're all following you behind there. And she's got diaper bags and baby bottles and trying to carry all the other stuff around here. And the kids are all following along and that kind of a deal. And you're out front. You can't be bothered with that because, you know, you're spiritual. You ain't changed the diaper in God knows how long. You don't know nothing about mopping a floor or sweeping a floor or running a vacuum cleaner. You don't know how to bust any suds. You can't even make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich without the crust getting cut off of it. Because you're the king of your house, you know, and always Proverbs 31 and that woman. Well, hey, bud, let me just tell you this. There's 65 other books in the Bible that apply to you. Amen. Amen. 
problem is, and the Bible starts off in chapter number 3 over here. He said, in the last days perilous times will come. This know also the last days perilous times. For men shall be lovers of them own selves. Self-preservation becomes the, the selfies of this generation. I've never in my life seen a bunch of grown men. I'm preaching to men right now. Ladies, you can take a nap. Don't be elbowing your husband right now. I'll just save those ribs for me. I'll get to them. I've never in my life seen a bunch of men so wrapped up in themselves in my life. The way they dress, it's effeminate. They're drawn to, to draw attention to themselves. They're, they're like in fashion. They're wearing makeup now. The only time you put makeup on is you got a big giant zit in the middle of your forehead and that thing makes you look like Cyclops and after you popped it and that mayonnaise and mustard winds up hitting the, the sink up there, you know, it, it goes all over the window and the mirror and that kind of little ketchup mayonnaise mustard, you know, you don't dip your fries in that. That ain't a good thing. And now you got a crater in the middle of your head that looks like something from the moon. And then so you go get you a little Bondo, you know, and fill that thing in, you know, and try to get it, and it won't quit bleeding. And so you get you a little bit of your wife or your daughter's makeup, and you kind of put it over that. We'll accept that to, to be okay every now and then. But then when it's... And... I get the privilege because you folks are so gracious with me. I get the privilege of traveling. I see grown men, five o'clock in the morning, sitting on an airplane, taking picture of them drinking Starbucks on the plane. I'm thinking, I, w I wish... I, I wouldn't, but in my mind's eye, I just kind of walked by and kind of accidentally in the name of Jesus just, Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Get a picture of that. They got these chick drinks now. You know, they got all this stuff. I mean, there's like listening to the preaching down there. There's so much sugar in the pulpit. You get diabetes. They got all this sweet stuff in them. I mean, when they take the thing off, it's kind of like, is that coffee? What is that? You know, it's kind of... Oh, it's so sweet. It's like, I'm sitting over here <laughs> by the emergency row. Right. Lovers of them own self, self-absorbed, uh, uh, narcissism. It's all about me. What's in it for me? That's not like Christ at all. As a matter of fact, when you look in the mirror, I can tell you the majority of everything that's coming in this list comes from self-love. Yes. Yes. The problem is, men, you have become selfish and self-preserving. You've even used the church for your benefit. You come to church because it makes you look good, but you don't want to get too much because you're afraid your wife and kids might out-spiritualize you because you're something different in the church house than you are in your house. You're not watching the wrong stuff here and listening to the wrong stuff here and saying the wrong stuff here. You look real good, but then, you know, you get to work and you, you kind of get a little loose with the language. You kind of get a little flirty with the girls. I mean, you know, you don't want to offend them. You're trying to, you know, manage them. You know what I'm saying? You know, just kind of, next thing you know, you're getting up and you're shaving and getting cleaned up and putting on foo-foo juice and all that stuff to go to the office and you never do wear it at the house. What's the matter? You got eyes full of adultery, do you? That's in the passage. That's not a woman. That's a man. So I thought you were going to talk prophecy. I am. Amen. Notice the absence of earthquakes and, and tornadoes and hurricanes and plagues and lice and locusts and frogs and all the other kind of things. Notice the absence of pestilence. Right, 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 right. There's no mention of it at all. You say, why? You're a Christian. He's worried about you personally. He's not worried about the environment. Amen. Climate change. Whether or not you spray aerosol in the air or drive an SUV, or how big your carbon footprint is and all that. Self-preservation is sort of like, hey, I'm writing this passage because I figure you Christians ain't going to be worried about that stuff anyway. Stay with me. It gets better in a minute. But you know what happens in the last day? Men, 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 men become lovers of themselves. That's a female trait. That's a, that's a trait of a woman. 
You get a woman and if you get her on a desert island, she'll be looking for two things. You say food and water. Uh-uh, a comb and a mirror. <laughs> you know I'm telling the truth. Amen. Come on, ladies, you can amen me. It's kind of like, well, okay, maybe a little bit, you know. <laughs> One lady said to me, said, Preacher, you know how it is. You know, if I get up and I'm like I really am and don't put my face on, I mean, it's pretty scary what I am. I said, I understand. Put your face on, sister. There ain't no problem with that at all. But that's a, that's a woman trait. You boys that are in the military, you know what the first thing is they do? They take you, they, I don't know if they do nowadays, they might braid your hair for you nowadays for all I know. Your military is entirely different. When I first went in as far as where I went to the academy and stuff, Fred Jones was out there. He used to be a DI in the Marine Corps. And the first thing he did was, is you're like, yes, sir. in those days you had any facial hair at all, yes. gone. I mean, man, I mean, you look like stinking like you're 15 years old, you're... <laughs> You're just all eyes, no lips, no nothing. You're just, you know, and scared to death. Everybody's dressed alike. They didn't have any time for anything. You go out in the military and the first thing they do, set you in a barber chair and take off your hair. You say, well, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, Delilah did that. Because a man thinks, because of how he looks, you know. <laughs> you ain't Fabio. <laughs> That's a woman thing. Yes. Hung up about your hair. Honey, you got your hair. You, you got it cut so short. Uh, where's all them pretty, pretty locks and stuff like that? In the military, you get up, they don't want you worried about cutting your hair. Brush your teeth and come to breakfast. That's right. That's it. You say, why? That stuff's about you and about your reputation. You don't stand in front of the mirror and look and... Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> they have a blanket party for you. You say, why? They're trying to tell you you're focusing too much on the wrong thing. Yes. Yes. Amen. Hair. Amen. Hair. Hair. What is that thing? That thing has to do with appearance. Mm -hmm. That's a woman thing. Yes. Amen. You say, what happened with Delilah? Samson had long hair because he was supposed to. Delilah finally got to the bottom and learned how to neuter him. Take off what God had given him. That's representative of the fact you're supposed to be an authority and you hung up on it and she's hung up on it. You say, why? She control you, ain't she? Baby, you will cut your hair a certain way, you know, just does something for me. Come here, boy. Mighty quiet. Either I'm telling the truth or y'all are like, well, I just never heard that before. It don't make no difference to me. Lovers of themselves. Lovers of themselves. Lovers of themselves. Could I just go ahead and step off into this one? It's a rough one, but I may step off into this. You know what happens when you wind up messing around with somebody? You mess around on your wife. You know why you do that? Because you love yourself. You know what happened? Your eyes are full of adultery. You want somebody other than what you have. And you step on her because you think you deserve more than you got. And boys, men step out 10 to 1 what women do. And most of the women that step out, they step out because the man quit being a man that they married. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Put that in your crack pipe and smoke it. Requires you to be responsible if you're going to do that. You're a truce breaker. You got no respect for vows anymore. Your word don't mean nothing. You can't keep a promise if there's a gun held to your head. You're like, well, I just don't know. I mean, I know I said that, but I don't mean that. You do contracts, you have to have 50 pages and stuff because you think the people you're doing business with do business like you do, you con man, you. You can't keep your word, you liar. You never intended to keep your word when you said, I'm a Christian, I'm going to follow Jesus Christ. Yeah, but. Until it crosses me, until I have to die to myself, until I have to die to my reputation. Boys, I'm telling you, in that Bible, 10 to 1, the men are stepping out, not the women. You be the man God would have you to be, and if she steps out, God will bring her back in. But the temptation is going to be for the man. You say, why? You love yourself, don't you? You think you're still back in high school. There's nothing worse than seeing some fat old hog running around, man. I'm, I don't, not, ma'am, I'm not talking about you. I'm, I'm talking about your old has-been bag of bones husband with a gigantic thing hanging out here. He got you now, so you know he don't have to keep himself in shape no more. He don't have to work out no more. He don't have to do anything to have any kind of appearance and all. And he's out there, you know, and he runs into a girl 20 years younger than him. Mm 
I see them in the airport all the time. I'm thinking, I, I intentionally do it. I say, hey, how you doing? Good to see you, man. Who's your daughter? And you can tell. I, you can tell. Oh, you can, you, oh, yeah, you can tell right off. It's like, and you know, and she's like embarrassed. And he's like, that's not my daughter. And I want to say, I haven't yet, but I'm getting there. I want to say, oh, you're a pedophile? <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to say. I mean, listen, if the kid was 20 or 25 and hitting somebody 15, you'd be saying, yeah, right? Yeah. But if they're 45 with somebody 25, it's like, well, you know, it's all relative. You're a pedophile. Amen. You ain't got no business having that filly in your stable. What's wrong with you? Amen. Grow up and act like a man, you self-loving fool, you. Amen. Think because you got some arm candy on, you're something special. Well, I'm virile, man. I can get her done, man. Look at this. I can't have a young woman be able to keep up with me. You eating medicine, boy. You ain't fooling me. Reach <laughs> And she ain't after you because of your physical prowess either. She's after you because you're old and you're settled and you got money. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 You give her something that young guy can't. That young guy's all about pulls all the time. Baby, let's do this. Baby, let's do that. Baby, let's do this. And all that. she's like, baby, could you pay the rent? Baby, could you put a meal on the table? Baby, could you fix the roof? Baby, could you cut the grass? You know what that old man will do? He'll cut the grass. <laughs> or pay somebody to do it. <laughs> he will fix the house or have you a repair man. You know what that young girl will say? Oh, daddy. Oh, daddy. Sugar daddy. Am I preaching at all? <laughs> Sugar daddy. Baby, I just, I love you so, you lying dog, you. You don't love her. She don't love you. She loves what you give her, security blanket. Yeah, man, she's after me. Keep on sucking. There's a lot more to go in, boy. You need to get you a pair of Spanx. And, and if you're uncomfortable because you're a little on the wrong side of the scale, good, suck it up. Amen. Amen. Somebody needs to tell you before you die and Jody moves into your household. Amen. You don't like this because you're guilty of it. Y'all like, yeah, that's right. that's good. you're acting like a woman. That's what a woman, now I'm preaching to the men and y'all are acting like women. Oh no, he didn't. <laughs> that's good preaching. Some of you got out of high school, 34 in the waist. Now you got a 34 IQ and a 40, 44 waist. Oh. You look like a stinking whiskey barrel with toothpicks stuck in it for legs. Q-tips for arms. But when you look in the mirror, you're like, yeah, man, that's what I'm talking about. Heart shaft or marks dressed. Ferragamo shoes. Drive me one of them Cadillacs. Drive me a Hummer. Why? Because I want everybody to know I got the dough, baby. That's your camouflage. That's you trying to act like something you've never been. That's you putting on a big show. Lover of yourself. Your reputation. Look who I am. You say, what do you say? Men, 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 men. Shall be lovers of themselves. Let's go through the passage here if we could very quickly, and I am not going to get it done in 15 minutes. Notice what he says in this passage right here. He said, uh, not only that, in verse number two, he said, lovers of themselves. Then he says, covetous boasters, proud blasphemers. What's a blasphemer? They damn everything. What's covetous? You know what that is. It's what you do. You get a new car. And somebody else has one like it. It's like, how come they got one like me? <laughs> to reveal that you only got it because you thought you were going to one-up everybody else in the parking lot. That's why. And don't tell me it ain't. You say, why? Because you love yourself. You think what you are and what you drive are connected. Well, then you need to go get you a broke-down Volkswagen. Go see Matt or Brother Larry. They'll take you to the junkyard and buy something that matches what you are for Christ. Amen. 
run around in the cream of the crop, the top of everything, everywhere else in your life. And when it comes to what you're doing for Jesus Christ, you can't even get your lazy bu uh, 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 back in to get to church. It's just too much for you. you got to rest. I'm so tired. I, I'm just wore out. Sunday's my only day to rest. i got a hard week. Then you're working too hard, old man, or you're out of shape one. Amen. You're too fat and lazy. Amen. In spiritual matters, you've yet to understand the importance of spiritual things in your life, and spiritually, you've waxed fat. Amen. 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 That's good. Amen. That's not just Israel, Amen. and it's not just your personal opinion. It's that you've placed priorities in places where they don't. That's why your kids are prodigal. Mm -hmm. Proud goes with it. Covetous goes with it. Blasphemers goes with it. You say, why? That is the leadership of a weak man. You say, what do you mean? See, if all I do is spend all my time talking about everybody who's doing it different than I do, it's there because I'm trying to make myself look good at the expense of others. Blasphemers ain't just about people that damn everything. When I fly, and especially when she flies with me, we pray the Lord will take the dams off the plane. They damn everything from the stinking jetway to the guys handling the, uh, the, the, the pilots that are there, the guy handling the baggage, the stewardess and all that. I mean, it's damn this and damn that, damn this. And I'm like, Lord, don't, don't, don't damn it. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. The car's on the road, the people on the road, and the next thing you know, the car flips over three times and they're like, I don't know how that happened. You've been praying for it. You got one through. Blasphemers. Always talking about everybody else. You know why you're doing that? Because you think you're better than everybody else. Amen. Remember, I started off with lovers himself. You've got to keep context. Yeah. That's why you're always talking about, ma'am, I'll just go ahead and put that one on you too because you've got a problem with your tongue all 40 feet of it. Amen. And your natural tendency is going to be when that man is out of whack, instead of letting it be won by your conversation, by how you act, it's to talk him to death. Amen. That's why 1 Peter 3 is in the Bible and said a meek and a quiet spirit. But you know what you'll have a problem? You'll have a problem with undermining everything he does, thinking you're going to get him in line. If he can't run, rule it, he'll wreck it. Proud, covetous boasters, disobedient to parents. Let me just cover this for just a second. I just read an article the other day. A 36-year-old man called 911. You know why? His parents took his phone away. Some of y'all are like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he should have. Who do them parents think they are? Taking, taking his phone. Well, he's 36. He must still live at home. Mom was paying the bills. Some of y'all think, you know, I'm calling HRS. That's horrible. That's child abuse. Disobedient to parents. You live in a day and time that wasn't existing as little as 20 years ago, as little as 10 years ago. Kids at least had respect for and did what their parents... Nowadays, they killed their parents. Nowadays, they cut up their parents. Nowadays, they want to be emancipated from their parents. Let me just tell you something. That's a God-ordained rule of authority. But the last days, you know what he said? Even in the church, kids are like, I ain't doing what they tell me to do. Who they think they are? And some of you braying donkeys in here and some of you kids in here support the rebellion of a kid against their parents and you ought to go to hell with them. You say, why? You have no... I said what I meant to say. You can't, you're saved. But they pick up the phone and they call you and they find solace and coming against their parent and talking about their parent and belittling their parent and not doing what their parent said. You ought to have your hide tore off. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. No, can't do corporal punishment no more. Might hurt the little child's intellect that he sits on every day. Give him a little bit of time out. How's that working out for you, Dr. Spock? Yeah. Juvenile crime is through the roof. Gang activity is through the roof. They're in every major city now, and they ain't made up of OGs either, the old guard. They're made up of a bunch of young, rebellious punks. 
that won't do what their mom and daddy says to do. And you know what will happen? The devil will always provides somebody that will have a sympathetic ear to your brain of your Amen. foolishness. Yes, sir. My mom and daddy won't let me do this. And well, well, my mom and daddy don't either. Go to solitary confinement for a while until you learn to do what they tell you to do until you start paying the bills, you Amen. brat. Amen. Amen. And daddy, you know what? I hate to tell you this. I know I'm gonna, I guarantee you I'm going to get the mail on what I'm about to say. I guarantee you it's coming my way. But it is still right to do right even if that kid goes prodigal and it is right for you to set the plow down and for you to say, we ain't doing that in my house and you kids are good and mad at me now and you stinking liberal parents are saying, now wait a minute, preacher. Uh -uh, if I'm paying for it, you're going to do what I tell you to do. What if they don't? Get out. You ain't got to go be emancipated. I'll emancipate you. You don't want to get out that, but I'm going to do what I want to do when I want to do it, where I want to do it. Okay, good. How are you going to pay your bills? Oh, no, you're paying my bills. How are you going to get food? You're going to pay me food. How are you going to get clothes? You're going to get my clothes. Or oh, here's a good one. My boyfriend will get it for me. <laughs> hey, let me just tell you something, sister. Why we own it? That boy is taking you because there's no responsibility that comes with it. Amen. You free. Amen. It don't cost him nothing. He gets the pleasure. But he don't have to pay the price. And you think, oh, he loves me. Till he has to pay for your soap and for your shampoo, and for your deodorant, and for your shoes and your underclothes, until he has to pay for the shirt on your back, and for your medical bills, and for your insurance, and the gasoline in the car to drive you all over the world. And all of a sudden he goes, man, I don't know if that's worth that. <laughs> that's called marriage, boys. Amen. Amen. Suck it up! Amen. Be a man! Amen. Say, well, it ain't like it used to be in high school. Well, welcome to the NFL, as Dick Buckus used to say. <laughs> I used to love that guy. He'd hit that guy, the middle linebacker there, he'd hit that guy for the Chicago Bears, and then have this thing, press stone antifreeze. My job is filling holes. <laughs> and then they'd have that guy come along there, and Zonker or somebody be coming through the middle. I know these are all dead zombies or whatever now, but that guy'd come through there, and he'd bam, hit that guy right in the middle of the chest in the numbers, and they'd say, welcome. To the NFL. Amen. Well, get you some smelling salts and jam them up your spiritual nostrils and wake up Amen. and trust God to Amen. do what's right even when you can't. Amen. Hold the line. Good preaching. Good preaching, brother. What are we talking about? This is eschatology. Yeah, it's good. Amen. It's, it's a prophetic conference. For us all to come to and study prophecy. We're having a prophecy conference. I want all the preachers to preach on prophecy. I'm preaching prophecy. Yeah. 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 You know what this Bible is showing us as men? He's showing you what you will become if you don't walk in the Spirit. I'll never become that. I'm coming to you. When a man thinks that he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Amen. I just, man, I think I heard about them preaching like this in the 50s, but we're not like that. No, you're 10 times worse than them. Back in those days, even criminals had some respect for the Bible. You don't anymore. You don't even respect holy things. I tell you this, sometimes as a preacher, you get more respect than you do as a policeman. You say, why? Some people understand, I may not do right, but some of you, you're like, us. You don't think nothing about putting your mitts on holy things, separated things, clean things. You can't shut up and be blasphemous and talk about them all the time. Just put your mouth on it like Mikhail did. Talk about it. Notice what happens in the passage here. He said, disobedient, unthankful. We kind of covered that unholy Clean, separated, without natural affection. Oh, there you go, preacher. Just talk about them queers a while. Camp out on them queers, them sodomites. 
them lesbians, horse-faced lesbians. <laughs> them old butches, dykes, them queers, them Frisco fairies. How about the unnatural affection of you not loving a baby enough that you go get it aborted? Yeah. Amen. That ain't natural! It ain't natural for a mama to take her two boys and for a welfare check to support her drug habit, throw those boys in the borrow pit. Amen. And when we were there and fished them out, she lied about her boys gasping for breath and said, a robber came and robbed us. I don't know what they did. I never know of a robber to just throw boys in the borrow pit. It ain't natural for a man to hang a boy up by his feet and swing him against the ball and burn him with cigarettes. It's without natural affection. It ain't just in a sexual way. It's not natural to get joy out of torturing things that bother you. It's not natural. It's not natural to be drawn away to filth. And to look at things and be a part of things and celebrate things that are demonic and it ain't natural. Amen. Without natural affection, it's not natural to not love your brothers and sisters. Amen. It's unnatural. Without natural, what by nature comes regular. Well, I don't know. The way I see it, Romans chapter 1 tells you don't turn there. i got a ways to go. He said, who worship and serve the creature more than the Creator. We're in the last days. We're talking about men. Amen, preacher. Get on to them women. Well, just hang on a minute. Because men, I'm going to show you the influence you have over women. That's the silly women in the passage. And that's who some of you braying donkeys have influence over. The likelihood of it being a silly woman that would be so stupid as to listen to you. Listen to David Koresh as he convinced a bunch of men that their wives should be his in the marital speaking of it. The marital form of it. Marital relations with a man that's not your husband. Lead captive silly women like the Moonies, like the Charismatics, like the Seventh-day Adventists, like the Jehovah's Women to a pot of those feelings. You know what he's saying about you men? You've gotten where you can communicate better with a woman than you can with a man. Amen. And a woman would love that. But it ain't manly. I know you have to watch Hallmark. Every now and then. But a little bit of that goes a long way. You say, why? Because you're a man. Truce breakers. I was just going to say, truce breakers is likened to people that are implacable in Romans chapter number 1. Implacable means they're relentless. I done made up my mind. I ain't changing. Like Hitler. Hitler is in his bunker. And Berlin is falling. He thinks nothing at all of taking a bunch of kids and putting them out on the front line to fight for what he believes because he hates the Jews. And he is jacking up his generals and he is threatening anybody that comes against him. You say why? He is relentless when it comes to persecuting that which he can't stand. I get it. I'm getting your message this morning. I see a lot of tops of heads. I don't see them during prayer meeting. I see them when the thing's hitting you. And you don't even have the respect to lift up your head and go, Amen, preacher, you're right. You ain't a man. You ain't a man. I bore me when I talk to you. I used to get told, Hey, boy, you look at me when I'm talking to you. he call you boy? Yeah, and he'd show me how much of a boy I was if I didn't look at him. How big they grow boys where you come from. Bigger than you, Sprout. Come on. Amen. Come on. I get it. 
You want them to eyeball you when you're talking, but when somebody is speaking authoritative, you ain't going to do it. You don't even teach them, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, no, sir, no, ma'am, I'll be right there, ma'am. You don't even teach them the general respect that they go, well, they got to be their own person, you know. Amen. They will be if you don't train them. Amen. I don't believe you got to look at somebody and all that kind of stuff. If it in the South is a measure of respect, Amen. you know what it is? It's showing the teacher you're listening to. I'm listening, teach. I might not be liking it, but I'm listening. I'm wore out with that modern day rebellious men that are kind of like the policeman pulls you over. I've heard of people getting drug out of car windows because of that. Without the seatbelt being took off. I've heard about that. I don't know if that could be happening or not. I don't know if it could, could occur, but you know what that is? That's just you and a lack of respect. Amen. You may not like me, and you may not respect me as a person. I'm fixing to get bold, but I am standing in a pulpit right now preaching for the Lord. Whether you like it or not, you should respect the office. Amen. You might not like the guy in the outhouse, but you should respect the office. Amen. Amen. But nowadays, I get it. You've got a bunch of stinking mavericks and there's a bunch of Cora, Dathan, and Aviron. But I kind of, boy, I'm telling you what, I don't need no lunch today. I'm going to have me all to the preacher today. You going to get your little following, are you? A bunch of little wussified men? You going to get you a bunch of little pink-blooded fairies following behind? Oh, man, let's go somewhere and talk about that. Huh? Uh, he's out of control. Uh, we, need to get, we need to put a bit and a bridle on him. I'll buck you slap off. Go ahead. Amen. Yes. Amen. When it comes to what I'm talking about now, you can't even understand. I'm trying my best to help you. I'm trying to assuage the great current that is sweeping us away. And the problem with the women and children ruling them in Isaiah is because the men stop being men. They stop earning the living and paying the price and sucking it up. Well, you know what my wife is? No, I don't, but you married her, stupid. And when you did, you had one thing on your mind. And five months in, you're kind of like, well, going to be like this for the next 50 years? Uh-uh. Going to get worse. <laughs> I couldn't say that. But when I'm in the office... You preacher, you're mad. No, I, I know what the problem is. Let me go to Washington. I'll tell them what the problem is. Yeah. You got people right now that hate the guy that's in there so bad, they'll vote for a queer. <clears throat> they'll vote for a socialist. I don't care who you vote for. I'm not saying to vote for the other one. Why well, vote for any of them? I don't, I don't even know. Hey, oh, boy, here we go. You a real man, are you? You stinking yellow belly, pink blooded sap sucker, you, you would make that statement about politics, but you'd never be so bold as to make that statement for Jesus Christ on your life. Amen. You'd never one minute say, I'm vote for Jesus. I want to see King Jesus. Amen. No, it's kind of like, mm -mm. I ain't getting my way. I don't get to go in the pulpit. I don't get to teach a class. I don't get to sing a song. Well, go ahead and pout and suck your thumb and you'll know why you're not doing it because you're pouting and sucking your thumb. That's why. Amen. Maybe people see things in you that you don't think they see with your folded arms and your head down and giving me that kind of... <sighs> He's on a tire. No, I'm preaching eschatology. I'm giving you a view of prophetic events. I don't know how much prophecy is there because it seems to be like it's on us right now. Yeah. Amen. Notice what he says, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers. That's like slander. If you can't get them to come along, you know, you, you throw out the untruth long enough that it'll stick. You know what Hitler said? And Nietzsche said? And there's another fellow that's out there called uh, Machiavelli from Italy. He wrote the thing called The Prince. You know what they all had in common? They said, the bigger the lie, the easier it is for them to believe. That's what they said. Hitler sold a lie. And Goebbels got behind it. And they used propaganda to convince the entire world that the Jews were the problem. Just like some of you will do this afternoon. The church is the problem. 
The preacher's the problem. The Bible's the problem. The parents are the problem. The school's the problem. Look in the mirror. Amen. There's the problem. I know you want to leave right now, but if you do, we'll talk about you. <clears throat> Slander, false accusers, incontinent, that's just no self-control. Look at the passage here. He said, fierce. What is that? That's untamed, savage, wild. You know what you're seeing now? You're seeing people that murder and hack and cut, shoot people indiscriminately. Just, pe just, just shoot people. You say, what is that? Fierce. In the last days. Some of it in the name of religion. Cutting people's heads off and burning them and stuff like that. That stuff wasn't going on back then. Untamed. But also notice that goes along with despise those. If I'm in the passage there, I think I'm right. Despise those that are good. Indicating that the fierceness is against the people that are doing what they ought to be doing. Right. Talking about your kid's Sunday school teacher. Because you know because they ain't perfect. Why don't you teach? You can't even teach your own kids. Oh, I'm sorry, they're perfect angels. I forgot. I forgot who I was talking to. Uh, you, you're teaching somebody else's kids because your kids are little southern bells and, and full of something that rides with it. You say, why? Because they're kids. You know, fierce, despising those that are good. Some of you all have a good time this afternoon talking about how I talk today. But I'm trying to do right. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I'm trying to be good. Yes, why don't you at least put a little salt and pepper on that before you throw it down? Sure. And why don't you say, well, I know he's trying. He's just dumb as a box of rocks and that ain't the way you go about it. Why don't you show me, man? Amen. Amen. Why don't you show me what it is, man? Why don't you show me what it is to come to church when you don't feel like it? Why don't you show me what it is to come to church when you're just so antsy? You just got to get out there and you're just not getting the opportunity here and I just got to get out there. Why don't you show me the faithfulness and steadfastness of a good soldier that shows up for duty even if he ain't going to battle? Amen. Why don't you show me the peacetime soldier, the consistency, the steadfastness of it? Well, if, if you'd let me teach, nah, uh, 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 then you're only coming because you're teaching. You man, you want to show me? Well, don't do it with your mouth. Show me with your actions with prayer time out there. Show me with your actions by reading your Bible and by studying and by giving and showing up for work day. Show me. I don't care if the women show. Man. Show me some calluses spiritually where you're spending some time doing something instead of talking about everybody else. Amen. Amen. People in here that have been ripped from one end to the other. And they come to church and they don't need to have you tear them apart. You male Jezebel you. Amen. Writing letters on them. Taking their vineyard away. Running them out. You say, preacher, that's, that's what women do. Oh, well, I just happened to be there. Watch how the passage is written. Now, we're rightly dividing, right? I'm going to hurry. Don't worry. I've only got 12 more. Notice. Notice what he says. He said, Traitors, heady, high minder, lover of pleasure more than love of God, having form of God at least, denying the power from such turn away, for of this sort. Well, what's he talking about? The sort is the men that have the ability to creep into houses, it's not the women. And lead the women that are not connected with the church, they at the house. Home church in it. Little Bible study, don't need a preacher. Husband don't want them to listen to a preacher. Because we don't do it like that in my house, preacher. Okay, fine. Don't be telling my wife otherwise. I'm going to drink my beer. I'm going to suck on my cigarette, chew my backer, listen to my music, and do what I want to do. Go into my man cave. Now come over there, and you make my wife think I'm not all that in a bag of chips. I ain't having it. She's at the house. She has a spiritual need. Guess who comes in? Mr. Effeminate. Mr. Golf Shirt. Mr. Little... What my friend says, Garth Brook microphone on. Right. <laughs> Mr. Skinny Jeans wearing yoga pants, wearing 
wife beating shirt wearing, flared out like a cobra. You know what he said? Go ahead, sister, that's fine. Listen, you know what it said? This is the sort Amen. that leads captive those kind of women. Yes, sir. He's not talking about the silly women in the sense of how silly they are. He's saying, you men have lost your influence with men, so you know what you do? You go after a woman yeah. crowd. Amen. 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 That's why the charismatic churches are full of women. Because they have kind of halvesies in the pulpit. Amen. And then they wonder, how come that guy's after my wife? Because he talks like he's spinning disc at yeah, the club. Yes, yeah. Amen. He gets that little microphone on. <laughs> hey, this ain't no obscene phone call. Yeah. Open your mouth and preach. Stop that breathing, boy. Amen. You up to something, you yeah. sucker. Amen. Amen. Let's take our Bible. If you don't have it, and come up here and share mine. We'd be like two peas in a pod. Pod. Did you hear me? Two peas in a pod. Can I say this with all due respect to all good God-loving women? The church ain't the bedroom. Amen. And my wife ain't interested in you. You say she might be. I'll help her to see the error of her ways. You will look like you got a thousand wasp things on you. I'll get up in the middle of the church service. We leaving, baby. Say, why? Because I know he ain't talking to me like that. Right. No right. preacher said to me one thing about a judgment preacher that occasionally raises his voice and gets a little upset. You don't have to guard your wife and your daughters because they ain't going to be interested in that. Amen. 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 Preacher done run off with somebody. Y'all would say, who but Drina would have him. <laughs> That's what you'd say. You'd say, there ain't no way. Run off with what? Somebody saw me the other day. My daughter's sick today. She brought her son anyway, and I praise the Lord for that. He's sitting over there paying attention. Amen. And she was there, and Drina Lynn was in the back, and I walked out. I said, hey, honey, how you doing? It's good to see you. you know? And I, I hugged her like that, and they... And they said, who's that young girl that the preacher was a hugging? They said, I don't know. He was hugging somebody. Roll the tape back. Let's get a picture of that. <laughs> By that afternoon, they're like, who are hugging? I'm thinking, I don't hug nobody. I don't think I hug nobody. I might have hugged Miss Barbara, Miss Pat or something. I don't, I don't think. I don't. I'm thinking, they said, no, blonde headed. I said, my wife. They said, no, it wasn't Miss Trina. We can tell her she wobbles when she walks. <laughs> she can't help it. That's the results of things. I'm sorry, baby, but I'm, I'm, preach I'm, I'm in the office right now. <laughs> I get a special dispensation. We'll be done by one. Relax. Amen. Some of you, you ain't going to ever fast any other way, so I'm just helping you. <laughs> I'm just, you know, that's funny. You're like... <laughs> You're so used to having what you want. And, and so then I got to that, I thought, oh, well, that was my daughter. Well, let me just tell you, I'm glad my daughter's been coming to church. Amen. And so when she came in, instead of me coming to her, you know, hey, hey, hon, how are you? Good to see you. Don't want to... No, it's my daughter. Amen. That's my daughter. I, I can hug my daughter. Yes. 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 I hug my wife. Amen. But even we kind of keep that. Every now and then I'll like look around, make sure everybody, and I give her a little, you know, Catch her off guard in church, man. She, what's she going to say? Oh, don't be doing that to me now. It's like, it's already done, baby. I, I sneak up on her. Tap her on the shoulder. Hey, babe. Mm, and she's like, oh, honey, what? <laughs> the 
But you know what happens? You look at how that passage is divided out. And are you listening to me? Or do you even stink and care? You know what you wind up being? You wind up being a preacher to a bunch of women. Because that's who will follow you like the Pied Piper. They'll think you're the, you're the man of God. Oh, he just, he's so nice. So wonderful. You don't have to worry about a judgment people, preacher, coming after your wife or daughters. That's right. Maybe I should cover some of these other things tonight. Let me wrap this thing up. But we're talking about things in the future. Verse number 4 says traitors. Judas is a traitor. Benedict Arnold is a traitor. Double agents make a commitment to God and then go back on it. I don't know about you. I've prayed this stupid prayer before. Lord, if you get me out of this, I promise I'll never. You ever prayed that before? I've prayed that before. I'm going back on my word too. My wife married me. I made her say the vows. You get that in a minute. I'm not responsible. My knee got tore up the night before, a couple nights before in a ball game, and I was up there, and the doctor would give me something so I didn't have to have surgery, and that thing's wrapped up in a cast. So I'm not accountable. I was under the influence. I was under the influence of love. I'd have married her in a wheelchair. But I made her say the vows. You say, why? I know me. You know what it said in those vows? Do you promise? Yeah. I know it's a bad subject. I know because you have the liberty. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm glad the Lord, when He took a vow and promised to seal me to the day of redemption, He didn't base it on whether or not I kept my end of it. I made sure big and she said the vows. You say, why? Because I know me. And I know sooner or later, if it wasn't for those vows, you know what she's going to say? I believe I'm going to change and get a new model. I don't think that boy's going to ever learn. But I made a vow. Did you make a vow? Did you make a vow to... Your wife, your husband, and before God, if I married you, you did it before God. Amen. Before God and these witnesses, I promise. I'm thinking about changing that to I swear. Amen. I'm thinking about, I know I can't do this. Give me that big old Jesus wept out of the back back there. He'll make you weep if you see the size of that thing. It's about that long. That's my little knife back there somebody gave me. I'm thinking about take her hand. Do you solemnly swear? I like the thing that the 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 uh, the old Norwegians used to do. The what are them people that got on them boats with them horns on their head? Vikings, them people. They used to do that, and then they tied them together for three days. I'm thinking. When we got married, you didn't have to worry about tying us together. I'm just saying, I'm not trying to be crude. I'm just saying, we did everything. I mean, it's like we married now. We get to do everything together, you know. Eat together the whole nine yards. But blood them up. You say, why? Nowadays, sometimes it's only the vow you made to God that will keep you going. Because sometimes husbands and wives can be jerks. But we're talking about husbands. Men, can I tell you something? When you start looking around and you find that you have a greater influence over women than you do men, you are in that passage and you are in the last days. Amen. Amen. You're not intended to have that kind of relationship with anybody but your wife and your daughters and your grandkids. Not according to that. Lead captive, silly, uninformed women creeping into their what? You see this in the passage? Hey, listen, brother, I love you to death, but I ain't got no business in certain places in your house. I've known you near 20 years now. I ain't got no business in certain places in your house. You've been around here for about 20 years near about. 
I ain't got no business in certain places in your house. Amen. Amen. When you as a man begin to creep into another man's house Amen. Amen. for the purpose of leading them astray, you know, an extra Bible study to hmm. teach them stuff the preacher don't teach them. Hmm. Creeping in there and teaching them single women, I teach you something. I know things that that old preacher don't know. All he does is yell at you. What you whispering for, son? Yeah, right. How come you got to have them around the kitchen table, son? Yeah. In the living room on a couch, in a love seat, in a sure. sofa, son? Sure. Won't you get up in a pulpit sure. and talk like that? I'll tell you why. You won't talk that way in public because the men will say, Well, baby, that's how I talked to you when we were like getting... You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm trying to win you over and I kind of lower my voice. I didn't say, hey, you love me. <laughs> you going to love me. No, it's like, hey, candle flickering in the wind, a little full of May and lobster there. Most money you spent on a meal since you were born. <laughs> but pff, what's money, man? You in love. And you're in a table full of a hundred people a restaurant. And nobody can hear what you're saying. And when a man is talking to somebody other than his wife and his daughter, he is right in the passage. And that goes for you praying, independent, fundamental, Bible-believing, dispensational, street-preaching, hell-hating, heaven-loving Baptist. Leading women away. If that husband who was working knew what you were doing, he'd string you up and I'd back him up. You know, call him on the phone. I'll help you. Got me a counseling degree. I need to talk to you in private. Alone. Tell me what's going on. Boy, you better be careful. Amen. Well, you about had enough, I'm sure. Notice the egomaniacs show up, heady, high-minded. Lover of pleasure more than lovers of God. I could spend the rest of the next hour on that. He's talking about men in the church who will kill themselves for everything from sports to finances to their own way of thinking. And something takes God's place. And now it's no longer God first, it's everything else and then God. He's in the equation, but He's not in the right place. Brother Woodard preached about having your priorities out of line. Having the form of godliness, denying the power thereof from such what? Look down around verse number 8, you'll see another doctrinal thing show up. After leading captive silly women, guess who's comparison there? Magic. Janice and Jambres. And you say, why? Signs, wonders, and miracles. The emotional thread. I'll grant you, men don't get too emotional. Except about catching a fish or killing a deer or winning a ball game. Race cars. Stuff like that. They'll act like they're crying sometimes if they think you're not going to make them what they want for dinner. And men can pout. Can I get a witness? Amen. They can get poochy lip, man. I mean grown men. Yes, sir. I mean tough men. I mean been whooped and beat men. I mean I'm talking about they're... that kind of man. But look what's in there. He's talking about the kind of men that lead the wrong kind of women astray. So what do they do? Slide a hand. They're slanderers. They're the way they're talking. What I could have said when we first started this is that after lovers of self, I could say that's God's idea of what the last day's man looks like. He's effeminate. Mm -hmm. right. And he appeals to women. Mm -hmm. And in the last days, the last church is full of women because that's who's in most pulpits. Yep. Has nothing to do with volume. 
has nothing to do with antics. It has to do with how you live. And I don't care how many times you have to tell me what a man you are. Everybody knows you ain't. Amen. Don't think I'm a man. Just try me. How, how, do, you, how do I try? I've, I've been trying you. Yeah. You, you live for yourself. Mm-hmm. You're self-loving. I don't have to try. You've been being tried yourself. You, you know, I don't have to try you by whether or not you can whip me or do karate on me or walk around, you know, Karen, got me a concealed weapon and permit, you know. It says concealed, stupid. <laughs> How come you doing that, Wyatt Earp? Were you John Wayne or something? Hitching up your giddy up there? Yeah, you know what? I know about you. I know I don't want you around when they start flying because I know what you're going to do. You're going to preserve yourself. you too interested in everybody thinking you're going to do it. You ain't going to do nothing. The bullets start flying. You're going to be like, ah, ah, ah. Come on, ladies. Let's get out of here. (laughs) Don't you worry. I got a gun. I don't have a problem with people carrying guns. I don't. The ones that have them and you don't know it, that's the one that'll peel your hide. You say, who are they? If I tell you, then you'll know. One might be sitting close by. (laughs) It's the ones that are always... You say, what is that? That's... Men doing that for the purpose of getting women to fall. Women are like, oh, he has a gun. <laughs> well, Paul says, he's going to give you the contrast and I meant to get here an hour ago. I think I'll cover it for you tonight and we'll stop. Paul says, Janice and Jambri shows up. And then he says, thou hast fully known My what? My doctrine. Paul said, you can see in how I live, I don't match any of those traits. You've known my manner of living among you. You've known how I've acted. You know what Paul's doing? He's using himself as a spiritual man in contrast to the unspiritual man. He's giving them an example. I was going to give you the positive side of that, but we've run out of time. If you'll come back tonight, if you're not too tired. I know the women will be here tonight because they're kind of like, I need this right here, preacher, for my husband tomorrow. I'm going to play this on a permanent loop through Lexus. Isn't that what they call that thing? What's the little thing in your... Alexa. Got it. So Brother Mitch has a woman telling him what to do all the time. (laughs) I have to turn off my GPS thing, sis. You say, why? Because my wife and I call her Joan. It's a woman always saying, turn right, recalculating, recalculating. I'm like, baby, I'm going to let you talk to me, but I, I, uh -uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm going to put my fist through that thing in a minute. The failure, men, is on our part. That's the truth of the matter. I've said some harsh things, and I've even joked around to try to make it a little easier, but the failure is on our part. And our women are losing confidence in us and the God that we serve because of the example we set. The problem is us. It's not the women, and it's not the kids. Men, it's you and I that are letting down our own families and our church families. And until we pick up our responsibility, we can't demand that others be responsible when we're not. If you'll come tonight, I'll show you some things in Paul's life that might help you. Father, I pray you bless your word today. Lord, thank you for these folks being willing to listen and for this little lesson on eschatology, this little lesson on prophecy, this little lesson on end time events. And help us to see when we look in the mirror how these things have a tendency to resonate in our lives and how 
displeasing it is to you, and may it be then also displeasing to us. And help us to make the corrections, Lord. Help us to realize the things are in the Bible just not as a matter of condemnation, but also to put us under conviction and then also to give us correction and instruction in righteousness so that now that we've seen the ugly down and dirty the, of what we really are, instead of licking our wounds and whining and crying about it, might we learn maybe even from tonight what we need to do to begin to patch those things up, fix those things up, and the Bible says for us to quit like men, to, to equip ourselves to begin to act like the men you would have us to be. Help us, Lord, in restoring us the spiritual manhood we need.